<laughs> hello, hello. Hello, Elizabeth. All right. Get my name changed here so I know who I am. Oh, I can't hear you. Hold on. Were you talking? Oh, okay. Hello, Miss Peggy. Hello, oh. everybody. Hello. Hello, Tamara. Okay, I will be right back. Doug from South Dakota. Everybody's so quiet. Hey, everybody. Hi, Pamela. How are you, sweetheart? Doing great. How are you? Good. I just got to watch that Rob Sperry interview. That was amazing. Oh, thank you so much. I couldn't believe that he said yes to doing it. We were pretty, pretty fired up about it. It was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Hi, Angie. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Okay, I'm back. I feel so much better now. <laughs> Were you not well? I'm, I'm afraid to ask where you went. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's long. It's a long time to sit. Uh, you know, so I spared you guys all the details. All right. All right, it's 431. Okay, you guys. I'm echoing here. I've got to shut my door. Let me shut my door. Oh, okay. So um, Tom and Denise are traveling. Denise is in, incognito. I mean, seriously. You can't even call her, text her, send her an email or anything. 
and uh, so at her coaching seminar that she's at, and um, and we all, it, it's, what time is it in New Zealand, or it, where is he, Australia now? I can't remember if he's in Australia or... Yeah, he's in Australia, and it uh, is 8 hours. So he should be, I think he's up, I actually think he's at Richard Brooks' house today. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. Very nice. Okay, so... Um, Adrian and I talked a little bit briefly before this and wanted to see what we were going to talk about. But um, one of the things, I don't know if you guys saw this post, Alex Tice uh, posted this and uh, he just wrote a little note and put it out there. And we, did we talk about that last week? I can't, I've been on so many different calls lately. I don't know if we actually talked about it. No, but we we, we about didn't it. talk about that on this call last week. No thieves. Oh, we might have done it on the We did it on the Friday call. Friday call. Okay, so he says five ways to grow your business in the next seven days. And I was thinking about that because whenever somebody says 30 days or 90 days, I'm like, man, I don't know if I can keep up with that run, right? But I might be able to do seven days. And so the number one thing he said, no TV, no news or Netflix for one week. That is kind of gave me a little bit of the heebie-jeebies, but I'm thinking, you know what, I, if I started on a Sunday and went all the way through to Saturday, I could probably do that. I could do that. Um, and I don't, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I do like movies and I do like to watch baseball. So that's one of my uh, things is, um, is watching, or maybe I like to sleep through baseball. That might be more uh, accurate, but I definitely like baseball. So the second one was call all your no's and offer them free shipping. So this month, right, we have free shipping. So we could call back all the people that we talked to before. A lot of people, you know, like, oh, I could get that from Amazon and I get free shipping. Um, and I, I'm gonna talk, I wanna talk about that really quick about the whole Amazon deal because a lot of people, you know, we know there's distributors who have product out there and it's on Amazon and then people ask me well what should I do if somebody's gonna tell me they're gonna buy stuff on Amazon so I do two things I tell them one that if if it's less than what I could sell it to them for then that person is um, out of compliance right they're out of compliance with their contract that they signed for the company and the other thing is is that well you, you don't you can't make any money doing that right they're just selling it on Amazon but you or just buying it from them and you couldn't actually build a business. And a lot of times I've gotten people to reverse and, and buy from me versus Amazon. So I just wanted to throw that out there, but we have free shipping, right? We always do for auto ships, but we always have to pay shipping on new orders. So that's a great perk right now. Um, the other one was uh, number three is schedule 21 prospecting appointments in seven days. Now, I don't know if that's clear, if, in that week, you schedule 21 points or appointments if you have all 21 in that seven days, or you just schedule them in that seven days. What do you guys think? I think you schedule them in those days. They may or may not be within that week, depending upon the people's time frame. Okay. Okay. That's kind of my interpretation, too. All right. Then, number four, and it looks like we have a special guest, Dave Brisky, on here. Hi, Dave. Welcome. How are we all doing? Yeah, well, we're all just hanging out, having fun. <laughs> we gonna get anything done on this call? Always, always. Well, that's Hi, Elizabeth, Tamara, Angie, Marianne, Shelly in the house. Woohoo! So, we're talking about five ways to grow your longevity business in the next seven days. All right, good. Yeah, yeah. Did you want to offer anything? Do you want to add anything? What would I have to offer? I, I, well, I don't know. Well, you're offering free shipping um, this month, so that's one of the things that uh, we're pointing out is uh, going back to people that said no's and get them on the free shipping this month. The, you know, the free shipping is such a great asset to utilize. If you need a reason to call people back. That's the perfect reason to get back to and say, hey, you know, this is, you know, a, a, an opportunity for you to, to get involved. You got free shipping this month. Let's get you started on the program we discussed. You know, you waited and you know what? It actually ended up being a benefit. I've only seen three free shipping offered like one time in the last 24 months. So let's jump on this. 
Exactly. I mean, and, and just go back to everyone and knock those people out, you know, and, and, yep. get it. and that's the key. Well, it's been a great perk. And um, even the people that weren't expecting to have the free shipping, when you tell them they're getting free shipping, they're very pumped. They're very excited. Oh, when they say they're not expecting it, they say, oh, that's great. Then you have more in your budget. Let's buy something else. One more thing. Let's add it to the list. There you go. Right. Okay. The other thing um, that he talked about was ask everyone, you know, for a referral. So it was really interesting because yesterday I had lunch with this gentleman and um, he said, well, what can I do for you? And I said, you know, actually for me is, you know, you know what I'm doing, right? And you might have some people that you know that might be looking for something, right? Um, you know, people that want to get their health better or people that want to, you know, uh, increase their, um, uh, you know, finances or whatever it is. And so asking for those referrals, and we talked about this on the Friday call, because I think Tom did this one time. We were talking about it. And one guy actually gave him 50 referrals, right? He didn't want to be in the business, but he gave him 50 referrals. And then Tom called him. He said, seriously, you know, this many people, you should get in the business, right? Um, and then the, the fifth one was to call all your zeros or, you know, your people who might have been on auto ship and now you notice that they're not on auto ship anymore. And just follow up with them and find out if, um, you know, what's going on. And, and the free shipping might inspire them to go ahead and do that order again and get them back on auto ship. So does anybody have any input that they wanted to add to that or other suggestions or if they like that? I mean, I like the seven day thing versus a long haul. I'd rather have short spurt push just for me. Um, and then uh, just new people. Oh yeah, just new people for the free. I'm so sorry. So if you call back and somebody was on an auto ship and it's just going to be free for those people who are new. <laughs> All right. So sorry about that. And it has to be at least $80. Correct. So at least $80 to, re, uh, to get into the free shipping. All right. Does anybody have any questions around that or um, a not? Oh yes. And not on the CEO packs. The free shipping is not on the CEO packs. Just so you know that. However, less than $500, they get free shipping, correct? Okay. All right. Okay. What else? Adrian, did you have something? Sorry, I'm putting, uh, I'm trying to put his, I was trying to find his post so I could put it in the chat for you while you were talking. But oh, I can so, write it out. I can put it in there. That's okay. Well, I will in a minute. No big deal. Okay. So let's talk. So this referrals thing is big because here's, so one of the things that I, I actually, this was one of the things that I learned early on when I first started building. So we know this guy, his name's Duke, and he is just like, he's the life of the party. He's a really fun guy, but details are not his strong suit. And so we, we had been talking about Duke, you know, everybody like, you know, this whole idea of being a, a tour guide and a talent scout as what you, you know, two of the fundamental things that you want to be good at in, in building a network marketing business. He is all tour guide, or sorry, all talent scout, no tour guide, because he does not want to learn the map so that he can be the tour guide. And so we were having this conversation with Duke about, you really ought to come into this thing. You know, he was kind of getting finished with another job and was looking for what he was going to do. And we just said, dude, you should do this. And he basically, and he basically says much. He said, look, what I want to do is like go smoke cigars and invite good, interesting people. And then you close them and you do all the work from that point forward. And so <laughs> that was basically his pitch. And I, and I was like, you know, so I'm getting ready because it was kind of, it was, we were looking to enroll under me. And so I'm getting ready going, look, dude, like that's just a non-starter. Like that's, this is not the way that things work. And before I could do that, my dad interjects and is like, that's perfect. You bring, you bring the people to us and we'll handle it from there. And 
in the moment I was a little like peeved by it. Cause I was like, well, this is just more work for me. Like, you know, why, why are we doing that? But we, but what the genius in that is there are people that, you know, that are scared, allergic, whatever of network marketing for whatever reason, but they're intrigued enough that they keep talking to you about it and they keep, you know, they're kind of wanting to figure out what's going on. And so asking those people for referrals is a great idea, which is kind of what Alex is talking about. But one of the things, and I've, and I've actually, now that I learned the lesson, I've noticed this pattern is that being able to say to somebody that you enjoy, that you trust, that you know would be good at it, but might not be ready. Look, just, you know, look for some people that this is the right thing for bring them to me. If I enroll them, we'll, we'll put you in and I'll put them underneath you and let's go and have this thing turn into a hundred dollar check into a $300 check into a $500 check. And I'll just do the work until you realize that this is something you should pay attention to. And then we'll go to work together. And because one of the things that I think a lot of people are maybe, you know, some people are just happy to give me the referrals. I'll give you 50, you know, that story like, like Marianne shared, they'll give you 50 referrals that, you know, they, they're good. Other people are like, well, no, these are mine. Like I'm not coming into business, but these are my people. I'm not giving them to you. And so just have that abundant mindset, you know, say, I'll bring them in, bring them into the business. I'll do the work until you're ready to do the work yourself. Because, you know, the difference between having them on your first level and your second level is not, is, you know, de minimis. The, if, if somebody is a star, you know, the last thing you want is your friend, you know, resenting you for the rest of your life because, you know, you brought in Scott Fardulis and didn't cut him into the deal. And now, you know, they could be getting this huge check and they missed the, they missed the big fish that they happened to refer. So just, that's a great way to soft recruit your, your close, you know, really warm network that are sort of the ones that, oh, they'd never do it. You know, so that like Alex talks about this, like give them the speech. I know you'd never do this, but you could, you might be able to find some people that would be great. Let them just let them live there. But then you'll be surprised, you know, not very many of them will turn down. Oh, well, Hey, why don't we just put you in the middle of this thing and let you maybe, you know, take a rider on whether this thing starts going somewhere. So that's, that's maybe just an extra little tip around how you might play out that referral conversation in a way that's not, Hey, just give me something, but how could I, you know, how could I actually offer you something by saying, Hey, if you can just get me into this conversation, you know, I, I can do something that might really benefit that person and might benefit both of us, not just me. Yeah. And one of the things that uh, I think in that um, Tom was saying that, uh, you know, you get him to say yes to a couple questions. So it's, Oh, Adrian, you know, I would do anything for you. Yeah, I do know that, you know, and we are good friends. We've known each other for a really long time. And, you know, we've done this and we've done that. Heck, I've known you since you were, I don't know, eight years ago, probably I met you. When I was eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> just got my driver's license. Well, come on. But, you know, just, and so you get those people to really understand, and like you said, I mean, you've done a lot of stuff for these people. It's not like you're just calling everybody and asking them for referrals, right? But it, it's interesting because I, I use that line. I called a friend of mine. I said, look, I know you're never going to do network marketing. And she goes, well, I wouldn't say never. And so immediately I wanted to give her a business presentation. <laughs> Right. But, you know, just know, sometimes you don't even know where people are, what, where, what their thought process is around it. But like Adrian said, a lot of people are seriously allergic to it. But I would ask the question, just tell me more about that or tell me why you think that because nine times out of 10, um, it's something they might not have even experienced themselves. They just heard it through the grapevine or someone told them a story or they saw an article or whatever it is. And um, I'm not here to convince anybody to do network marketing because pulling someone along is, uh, a, is hard, is really hard work. But, um, you know, getting them to understand really that it's a real deal. It's the real deal. It's not, it's not anything that's, um, you know, silly or a scam or whatever, but they have to know it takes a lot of work. And I think that's part of where, when we're relating that to people, we just can't say how easy it is. We've got to say there's work. 
Okay, Adrian, you're smiling. What's going on? Oh, pig through the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> really? Can we get through one? I'll, I'll just emulate Tom. He's not, not here. A good expression. <laughs> we do not need Tom. to adopt that into our own vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, channeling Tom. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, my gosh. So, is, does anybody else have anything around that that they wanted to comment on or, or add to? Unmute. Say something. Dave's Dave's and ready and raring. Dave, you have something? You. Oh, if oh, you can. Hear me. I think one of the things is we've got to be a little bit more purpose driven, even in in whatever these um, whatever these conversations are, whether it's a call like this or what you know. What is this action step? Because I see a lot of people doing a lot of things that actually don't do anything to push their business, but they really think it does. Okay. Uh, trainings are really great, but it's a complete waste of time if you're not taking a couple of nuggets and actually putting that plan into action. You're having this whole conversation right now about referrals. There's no question that referrals work. Any sales training you ever had. I mean, when I was first trained, I mean, a lot of people don't realize that my first jobs were very, very sales oriented, marketing oriented right out of, uh, right out of school. I was uh, one of these crazy people that had both sides of their brain marketing. So I was a, I was a finance and marketing major. Hmm. Absolutely no sense, but I was, and I really got numbers and I really marked my love. You know, my language is actually more towards marketing and sales, believe it or not. Uh, I just, I have a gift with numbers. That's a God given talent. It's not something I'm really passionate about, but it's a, such a great tool to have in the shed to be able to utilize. But the, the point of it is, is right even out of Fordham University, I, I this company, I, you know, this was back when you used to get tons of job offers, right? Back in the day, you'd get tons of job offers. I had 23 job offers out of Fordham, okay? Can you imagine you could pick from 23 different institutions, from PepsiCo to the tiniest company? And believe it or not, I chose the tiniest company. I, I chose a company probably doesn't even exist today, Croy Lettering Systems. Because I like the idea of being a big fish in a small pond, not being a small fish. Right or wrong, that's what I like. And they said they had great training. So I went with this company because they had great training. And in that training, man, it was a week solid of sales training, alternative choice closes, all the basics. Any of us have ever done, read a book, right? You know, give your choice, a positive or a positive. Would you like BTT or would you like B or the Healthy Start Pack? You just want this one or you just want that one? I mean, all these types of sales techniques. But the biggest one was what was the greatest use of a no? You know, for me right now, no's to me would always get coffee. I would let, I would never have a no. My goal would be anyone I ever got a no from, they're going to either buy coffee or I'm going to get a referral from. You know, that would be my no, right? That's how, I, that's the psyche I would have. I'll, it's okay. You, you know, who wrote the, uh, the expression about pushing through the Python? Alex Tice says it beautifully, work with the willing. You know, your strongest businesses in this company are those that have 80% customers. You want to check while you're sleeping on the beach on vacation, have 80% of your business be customers and have that 20% business builder just be people that are getting it and building the business and you can focus your time on them because customers don't take as much time, do they? Right. Our goal for customers to get them in auto ship as quickly as we can. And I think we kind of, whatever we're doing, like this call right here, where's the call to action? You know, that's what I would do. This is really great. We got 22 people. I would be sitting there going, you know what we're going to do? We got this call next week. Is this a weekly call? Okay, there's 22 of us. This is a weekly call. Here's the goal. We're going to figure out how many referrals we can get by next week. We're going to see how many referrals and how many we can convert to business by the next call next week. We're all going to sit there. We're all going to be accountable. We're going to have our accountability partners. We're going to keep track of how many calls we made. We're going to see how many people we asked for referrals or a cup of coffee. We're going to take our nose and see what happened with that alternative choice. And we're going to give our scorecard next week. We're going to hang up the phone and get after it whatever hours we have. And if we'll start pushing action steps like that, your business will grow, okay? Sometimes we train and we train and we train and we train. You know what the best training is? Is get knocked on your butt a few times. Get back up, dust it off. You guys all love longevity. We got to go to work. You know, everyone was like, oh, Dave, my God, I don't know how you, you raise, I raise that, that, you know, that bank deal. We got over $3 million. That was a goal. I mean, anyone that knows me came to my door, which is right over here, and looked at me, and the phone was never hung up. It was 
East Coast time zone at 5 a.m. all the way through, and then I was calling Asia. It was a 20-hour sprint. You can't do that for the rest of your life, but if you really want something to happen, you've got to will it and make it happen and put the energy in. Calls like this, I love. You're just, you're talking about real tools. And put the tool in the action. Because knowing that you have a tool and actually swinging the hammer is completely different, right? And this is what I would like to see happen on these types of call. A little bit less complacency and a little bit more like we're going to do it. Even if it's a small thing in a box, you know what? I'm going to, I am going to put that step into action. I only have three hours. I work full time or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Don't let it be an excuse. I have three hours a day. I'm going to lock myself in. I'm going to have my call list going. I'm going to ask for those referrals and I'm going to see what my conversions are. I'm going to keep score. That's the number side of my head. I'm going to keep score so I know exactly how many calls I have to make and referrals to ask for. I'm going to total them up at the end of the week and see what my conversions are. And I'm going to see if I can get that scorecard better. And then you can say, if I want to double my check, I just have to double that number right there. That's where I want everyone to start thinking about their business. Put it into action. Everyone on this call can double their check if they're willing to double their check willing to do those network marketing activities or customer building activities to double your check. I've been popping in and out of calls and I love the information, but then I'll come back the next week and I hear we're talking about new information. Where's the accountability? Where's I put it into action? Where's this support group that says, I really struggled with referrals. And you know, Mary Ann's saying, man, I killed it. I got 75 referrals last week. What did you do, Marianne, to get those referrals? Now we're starting to push the ball down the field as leaders, right? Because we're not all going to hit it out of the park. You know, but the cool and power of networking as team is we got 22 people on this call. Wow, if we put that energy to work seven days from now, and we had this success story versus that success story, and you packaged all that up, and then the next week everyone tried those new things instead of beating their head against the wall because they've been striking out, You'd be killing it. You'd be pushing it down the field. And you would be running to this phone call to hear the new ideas and to share your success. This is what I want to see happen. This is why I'm popping in on a lot of different calls because I'm starting to see this pattern. I love the commitment of being here, but I'd love it more if there was a commitment to be here and then a commitment to execute and then a commitment to actually wear your results on your sleeve. The reason why 65 and a wake up works is because it's accountability. It's hard. Right, you gotta keep doing it. You gotta start over if you don't do. There, this call can have that same type of principles if you want it, if you really, really want it. Keep your scorecard. Why does Dave Brisky always have a book with him? Because I can go back over the week. There's never not a note. Everyone says he's always got that book. What does he do? Because at the end of the week, I go back. Sometimes I have a very unproductive week. Ever have an unproductive week and you don't know why you have an unproductive week? This book lets me forgive myself. Or it lets me say, you're just lazy last week, basically. That's why you had an unproductive week. Apparently, you were too tired. Or I see why. Oh, my God, I had this situation with my wife, this medical situation. I had a situation with my child that I had to deal with. And I can forgive myself for having an unproductive week. I had my priorities in order. And I can get back at it. And now I got to do double time, right? Because I had to do those things and get my numbers back up because I now know how many referrals and how many calls it makes to make money. And the reason why I'm not making money is because I'm not making the calls or I'm not asking for the referrals or I'm not making it happen. And this is what I'd like to see you guys push down the field. And I promise you this, if you will do that, if someone will stand their hand up and say, I will do that and I'm going to ask for referrals and I'm going to do this many and will keep their scorecard and you'll scare, share those scorecards, you will make money and your businesses will grow. That's how business goes. Yeah. Good stuff. So I just, that's what I had to say. All right. Good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Could you just take your energy up a little bit, Dave? Yeah. I mean, just, you're like a wet blanket, man. Uh, yeah, I can't <laughs> help myself. Drink some coffee, <laughs> would you? <laughs> <laughs> I drink plenty of coffee. You already know that. <laughs> and, I mean, I, I love it's you happy. folks, and I know you bleed longevity, and I know if you'll do that, You'll, your businesses will take off and you can then teach other people how to do it. And that's the key, right? That's the power. When you know how to do it, 
you know exactly the scoring system and you can influence people and you'll be able to figure out after one or two weeks that you know what that person just needs to be a customer they're not willing to do the things it's going to take to grow my business and i only have so much time to give to my business and to people that's what it's about yeah did, did anybody want to follow that <laughs> <laughs> This is iced tea, by the way. Non-carbonated, no sugar. Ooh. Uh, no. <laughs> All right. 25 pounds down, guys. We're doing Woo! it. You look like right. before Shelly, and after. Shelly Davis, my inspiration. Yes. Marianne, can I say something? Yes. We're, uh, so I thank you so much, Dave. I love the action. I think if we just keep talking, it's going nowhere. So that's why I want to admonish everybody about the 65 days in a wake up process going through and forcing yourself to go through something that's very challenging that will completely stretch you. If you've done it, I mean, I, I think that's probably the thing that's made the biggest difference in my shift from a health person to a professional network marketer. And I never thought I could do it. I never liked network marketing. I never thought I wanted to be a network marketer. But it's like, it really is what everyone says it is. And it's really learning how to listen, ask the right questions, and just be personable. And it works. And so that's been, for me, the biggest action step that I have taken since I started Longevity. And totally outside my comfort zone. But it has produced results. So just wanted to give a plug for that. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much. And ironically, that was the uh, next thing we're going to talk about here. So um, we wanted to talk about 65 and a wake up and you being a recent graduate and um, just your passion around all of that is so inspiring. I think to those people who might be just sitting on the sidelines and they haven't jumped in yet. And so one of the things that we wanted to talk about here was um, some of us have gone through it once. Some of us are back in it and the difference between being there before and being there now. And I know some of you have done it and you're gonna be getting back in. And some of you probably have just really stuck your toe out there and you're not ready to do anything. You're just checking it out. And, um, and so for me, I think one of the things that I realized was uh, being more intentional about those conversations about the interviews and about talking to people and really digging deeper and finding out what people are looking for. There's so much on the surface type conversations and those are easy, right? Those are easy to, um, to uh, you know, start, but that, that deeper level of getting down and I've been afraid to ask some of those questions, you know, afraid to ask the question, well, um, you know, are you all set for retirement? Are you ready to go there? Or are you really interested in doing something about your health? We talk about the, you know, a one to 10. Where are you at as far as, are you ready to make a move or do something different? And so being more intentional about, around those questions this time around. Adrian, did you want to add something there? I, I think you, am I muted? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, I, so, yeah, I would love for more of our, I, I call them our victory lappers to, to jump in and, and just share what they're doing, what, what just made them decide to come back to it, what they're going to do differently this time as a result of what they did last time. And I'll just share that I am trying, I'm desperately working to get the guts up to jump back in the water. I haven't quite gotten myself up there and ready to, to take the plunge yet. But the number one thing for me that I would do differently and that I think, you know, forgive the shameless plug, but it's true that I think the contact mapping app will make a tremendous difference around is that it, you know, you had the first time was really learning how to do 65 days in a row of two interviews, which was like took everything I had. The second time, I, I'm pretty automatic on that now. Now it's all about the three-way invitation and it's all about the follow-up. That's where that's where it goes. And I Pat Pat Kendall, I don't know if Pat's on here today. Pat said this the other day and I, it was just so spot on. He said, uh, yeah, hey, there you are, Pat. Hi, Pat. Pat said, I, you know, I did this the first time and it made a huge difference for me as a human being 
but it didn't make that big of a dis a, a difference for me in my business because I I inundated myself with essentially balls in the air of, of meeting all these new people and I couldn't manage that much follow up without a tool. And so he is reloading right now. He's learning the contact mapping system. He's learning how to use that to make sure that he follows up the way that he should day in and day out. And that's going to be where he's going to now go and turn this tool on to build his business in a huge way. And so that's what I want to do. And I want to make sure I'm ready for it because it's, I think we've got better tools. And so that's going to make the lo the load lighter, but doing that level of follow up is, is a big, big order for us to step up to, but it's also exactly what it takes for you to really go and light your business on fire in the positive sense of that phrase. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's what we want to do, right? We want to, we want to catch fire and we want to build huge momentum and we want to, we want to have people sense that our confidence is building and that they're joining into being a part of something. And that's, that's where the big difference is. So, to, so I guess to back up one thing, because there's not every single person on this call is in 65 days and wake up. And there are some people that are on this call that may not even know what 65 days in a wake up is. So 65 days in a wake up is a Facebook group. It is the most unbelievably supportive, exciting accountability group and encouragement group. And what we do is we let people stand on the sidelines for as long as they want. And then when they're ready, they jump in the water and they... Uh, they go on a journey of interviewing two people and three-way call or sharing a tool with one every day for 65 days in a row. And on day 66, you are a professional network marketer. You get a free ticket to GoPro or to the ANMP or to the Longevity Convention or to the GoPro Women's Event or whatever it is that you want. And it is, and that is actually the least valuable thing you get out of the deal because the most valuable thing you get out of the deal is that it transforms who you are as a person and it transforms your business if you do it the way that we talk about and if you let people coach you along the way. So you want to be in that group if you're not already in it because you want to be able to see how this thing works. And the second thing, I already forgot what it was, but it was really good. So hopefully it'll come back to me. Well, what? So, oh, sorry. Well, no, I was going to say, Elizabeth, do you want to share with us a little bit of what you felt like got you stuck along the way? Okay. Uh, oh. I'm going to do it on my phone, if oh, that's okay. 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 Instead of the computer, because I keep losing sound on the computer. Okay. Um, so, actually, Dave spoke one of the things that I was actually stuck on, that I've been stuck on for a long time. And um, I, I had... had Oh, oh, now I get my neck. I'm going to take that off. Maybe that's better. Just muted my other. Okay, good. All right. Um, I was actually stuck on the customer versus business builder. Um, I kept on hearing everybody, um, and 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 because I wasn't in their specific groups, I only heard part of how to do things. So I think that's kind of what got me lost. But when Dave spoke about 80% customers, 20% business builder. I was stuck because it sounded like what everybody was trying to do is like, you're only looking for business builders, forget customers. You only want business builders. You only sign up with a CEO, CEO pack. You only do this. You only do this. And I felt like there was just so many rules that you're supposed to just only fit it into this box that I came, you know, as an essential oil trainer from another company. So like I, I teach chemistry of essential oil. I teach a lot of stuff. And so when I had, when I've been trying to make the switch over to this other way of building, I, I got completely lost, like 100% lost, even in the three-way call, just lost. Like what's, how do you do the three-way call? What's the three-way call? Can I get a practice of a three-way call? And just, I mean, literally just trying to figure this out and, and couldn't. I got to say one thing real quick. A couple weeks ago, we had a person on the chat and said, how do you talk to somebody who's been burned by another company? I had been burned by another company and that man Dave Brisky is the reason why I'm in longevity and I love that man and I love longevity. Thank you, Dave. It's not wasted. I'm getting there. It's just taking me a little time, but I'm going to get there. But that's what I got stuck on. That's awesome, Elizabeth. So, so let's talk a little bit about that, especially around this customers and business yeah. builders thing, because what the name of the game is that you want to use the coffee shop interview to figure out what people want to be 
and then drop them off where they want to be, right? Okay. If you try to turn a customer into a business builder, it's not going to work and you're going to turn them off. Right. The cliche network marketer that's, you know, I just wanted to buy some freaking essential oils. Why are you giving me this comp play? I'm like, I don't want that. So don't, we don't want to be that person. What we want to do it, and, and we want to treat customers as incredibly valuable because that's what they are. And we want to treat business builders as incredibly valuable because that was, that's what they are. And we want to treat all of the above as human beings because that's what they are. And so start with the human being, take, figure out who they want to be, drop them off right there and sh shut your mouth about the stuff that they don't want to be. Right. And, you know, and, and that sounds simple, but it's, we are so in our own, we, we can be so in our own heads of, trying to you know stick to some script or do some goofy thing and you know i there's i you hear trainers go just you know i don't know why when we get in network marketing like we forget everything good we ever learned about how to relate to people in business and we just start acting weird like just don't be you be a good friend be a good listener be you know proactive and persistent but don't don't go and act like a goofball you you don't serve yourself or anybody else I got to thank, I got to thank you for that. And I got to thank you even for addressing that because I've been so stuck for so long to the point of, I don't, nobody knows I'm in longevity. Like nobody knows I even have a business. I, I am so secret. I mean, because I've been taught so much. You keep your business undercover. You keep your business undercover. I'm so undercover. I didn't even know I had a business. <laughs> I mean, it's sad. But that's I was stuck. awesome. That's, that's you know. Yeah. So again, what they've said where, you know, you hear what people are doing that's working. It's like, cool. You know, if I can hear what's working, it's like, oh, you're doing this and this is working. Okay. How do I implement that for me to start working on that? Because I know, I, I don't know how I know this, but I know deep inside of me, if I can get past this one part, I can get to the top. I, I just know it in my heart. I know, I know, I know that I know that I know like would gamble my entire life on it. I know that if I can get this one thing fixed, I can go, you know, cause I'll listen, I'm coachable, I'll go. I'm just got stuck. So Elizabeth, pick, pick two or three people in this community that you resonate with, you know, Tom, Denise, Marianne, yeah, I mean, I gotta look, I'm a terrible multitasker, but you, you know, Jennifer, you've got Pamela, you've got, Angie, you know, there are, there are a bunch of people that have done it their way through this, but have done it, the, done it to the T, have really made the most of it. And so go talk to a couple of them and you, you can do this and you can do it in a way that fits inside of you. And man, you're going to be unstoppable. So let's do it. Pat Kendall, where are you at, man? I want to hear from you. There he is. Somebody unmute that beautiful man. Yeah, I'm up. Can you hear me? Yeah, we're good. We're here. Hey, I see me on the phone. Hey, uh, I just wanted to say what you said a while ago about uh, kind of losing track of things in the middle. I've been a realtor for 20 years, and when you get into network marketing, it's kind of like you've sat down with a person, you've spent 15, 20, 30 minutes with them, you know the size, shape, form of the house, where it wants to be, and how many car garage, how many bathrooms, how many bedrooms, but they do not want a swimming pool or they do want a swimming pool. And so you pull up all these houses in network marketing and we try to sell them a house when they don't want a swimming pool with swimming pools, you know? And I take them out and I show them one house and they look at me and say, hey, stupid. I said, I don't want a swimming pool and this one has one. So yeah, that's okay. I've got another one, let's go look at it. We show them another one with a swimming pool, you know? Why, I don't know why we do that in network marketing, but we have the ability as if anybody's ever bought a house and you sit down with that realtor, he inquires on your desires. You know, you, I mean, they know who you are, how big your family is, where you're from, uh, how many kids you've got, you know, what your dad and mother did kind of, you just kind of get a feel of the family. And that's what network marketing should be. And that's what the 65 days in a wake up call does for us. But what it did for me, as you said a while ago, it got me through 130 people and I needed to follow up on probably 80 of those. And it just almost didn't happen. So then I took a break, I relaxed, went to GoPro, really came back professional, really had an idea. 
had a sound idea of who I wanted to be in this business. And so I started 65 in a wake up call. I got four days in, I had six quality follow-ups and it was virtually impossible to do without contact mapping. The contact mapping is a way to set yourself up for what you need to do next. It's something that if I'd had it 20 years ago in uh, real estate, I would be a multimillionaire right now because I would have known in my little phone when I picked it up and Fred called, number one, I'd have his picture. I'd pop up Fred's information that says all about his kids and everything. And it might've been three, five, seven years ago, I sold him a house or didn't sell him one. And now I've got all this stuff and he is so blown away impressed with me because I remembered that he had this dog named Spritzer that was just amazing that it, you know, and, and, or whatever. Tom talks about all the time about when he talks to somebody, they think he is the best guy in the world because he remembered they had this little dog. People are so impressed when we know who they are the next time they call us, the next time they pass by. I may forget their name, but I'm not ashamed to ask them what that name is. You know, hey man, I forgot, what was your name again? And now all of a sudden I got a place to go and seek. I might want to go to the bathroom, pull up contact mapping, look him up, say, man, when I get back, say, hey, how's your wife doing? You know, it is amazing when you call somebody two days later and say, you know, you haven't left my mind since we met the other day. For the last two days, all I've been thinking about was what you said. They care so much about you caring about them that they just love speaking with you. You become part of their life. You become part of their family. And you don't sell them a thing until they're ready to buy the house with a swimming pool. That's all there is to it. Hello. I had muted myself instead of unmuted. Oh, um, okay. That, that was spot on, man. I, and it's all, every one of these things is, it's that power of documentation, right? You had, you, when you're, we're trying to do this at a scale that your brain, you think you're going to remember, you're not going to remember because we're trying, we're, we're doing it with too many people and that's the beauty of it, but you've got to have a system to keep that stuff straight. So that then when it comes time to sell them the thing that they want to buy, that you actually know what is the thing that they want to buy. And, and that's so perfect. And, and Pamela put something awesome in the, in the chat there as well about that, you know, in, if, in real estate, it's, they tell you, you know, they're generally fairly clear about what they want to buy. In network marketing, that's not always the case. And so those listening and, and interviewing and questioning skills become even more important so that you actually can discern that. Go ahead, Pat. Can I pop, can I pop back in? Yeah, One yeah. thing that, I've, that a lot of people have asked me is, well, how do you get their picture? You know, what do you do? How do you get their picture so often? I get most everybody's picture that I get a phone for. And what I do is I put their phone number in and then I punch add the contacts and then I put in their name. And then I turn the phone around to them and show them. And I said, you know what this little circle's for? And they say, no, I said, that's to take your picture. And they smile and go goofy face on you. And, <laughs> or they say, yeah, that's where you take my picture. I said, exactly. And you know what they do? They smile and go goofy face on you. And it's amazing that I don't ask them for their picture. I ask them if they know what the little circle's for. And they give me the right then at that point, I've had no a couple of times, but then they serve me by saying, sure, let me smile for you. And it's, it's just awesome. It's so passive, it works virtually every time. That's awesome. Okay, somebody said, Pamela said Tommy's here. Is Tommy here? Hey, mates. <laughs> hey, mates is, is his title. Unmute I'm him. trying to unmute him. Come on, unmute yourself. All right. Oh. Ha, ha, ha. Where's he at? Oh dear. Oh, hey, Ken Smith. Here's some Tucson right there. Who's driving? Oh, it must be Ken. Ken did you get him unmuted? Mm -mm. Oh, there. Oh, wait. There he is. There he is. Okay, Tom, we gotcha. He's muted again. He muted himself. Muted, mute, unmute me. There you are, there you are. Now you're unmuted. All right, 
All right, I'm not touching anything. So hello, everybody. So I am with, how many Uber rides have you given out? Uh, 4,000 plus. 4,000 Uber rides. He is a, his rating is 4.999 something. And he is like, he dresses in this suit every day. And I am telling you, he is going to be so rich. I know you guys saw that interview with that guy I did yesterday that I stuck in 65 days in a wake up. That Uber driver, I've got like five videos of him, but I had, I, he was getting so deep with me, I had to turn the video off because I didn't want you guys to hear anything that he might tell about his life that you shouldn't hear. And it was, you know, I wanted to have little video clips, but I'll tell you, it, it's, it's been a glorious trip. GoPro was unbelievable. Every one of you build a little group. Angie, you and, you and Claire get together, grab Marianne, and say, we're a rank advance them next month. And I'm holding you to it. You hold me to it. We hold each other to it. Stuff like that came out of it. Uh, Eric Warre was just on fire. I had dinner. I, he called and asked me to have dinner with him last night. I thought it was kind of weird anyway. So I changed my plans showed up and I knew I was going to have to have dinner with Jesse Lee Ward and all those type A women that were going to scare me out of my wits. It was worse than that by a thousand times. I walk in and it's Eric Warre, his wife, his little boy and his daughter. And that's it. Like I'm with the family and I had to have dinner with them in this restaurant. And it was very, very odd and awkward because I have such bad table manners and I didn't comb my hair. So it was very rough, but I'm okay. And now I'm on my way down to Richard Brook from the four-year careers house. And it's three and a half hours away. And Ken decided to drive me down there out of the kindness of his heart just to take me. And I said, no, I want to pay you like Ebert as he goes, no. He said, that is not what we do. We're friends. And I'm telling you what, I am the luckiest guy in the world, Tamara Willis. I'm the luckiest person in the world. Jennifer Saltzman. I'm the luckiest woman and the great man in the world, Shell and Angie. And I'm just looking through pages of you guys because I love you. And it's sickening how much I miss you. Hello, Pamela. It's unbelievable. Who was that guy, man? He's like, oh, that's Rock Rice, man. He looks like a movie star. It said Sandy. But I thought, man, alive, she got herself one hell of a haircut. And it's Rock. So that's beautiful. But you know what? There is no doubt, no doubt that the name of the game is longevity. No doubt. What we've got down here is the opportunity of a lifetime. What we've got down here is the gateway to Asia. And every one of these people speak English. Every one of these people are, I mean, now, GoPro, I'm so mad at myself for not making it more important to the other distributors of longevity. We had three people there. Colleen Walters, who is a network marketing machine, I thought she was a, a party planner, man. She's got massive, massive, you know, huge experience in building network marketing teams and organizations. She's down here. She and I are putting on a big training on Saturday and Sunday, one in Sydney, one back in Brisbane. So for, from here, I go to Brooks House. Tomorrow, I go to Sydney. Then I go back to Brisbane. Then I go back to Sydney. And so I'm going to be busier than hell the next four days. But I'm going to tell you one thing right now. It is all multi-level marketing all the time. And Australia, New Zealand, it is the gateway. And all of you guys have a chance to just live this beautiful country and love your life. And I want you to. I want you to so much. But it's called rank up. I don't care about liking things on Facebook. I don't care about QV. I want your check to go up. That's what I'm committed to. So the way that your check goes up is business volume, business volume. And all the smoke and mirrors, all the stuff that they're trying to distract you with, don't do it. Think about your business. Think about your organization that you work for and stay in that lane. When you're making enough money that you can get out of there and go do whatever you're going to do as a hobby or a passion, if it's liking things on Facebook or whatever, that's great. But I want that thought into your brain right now. What does my paycheck go up to? And I'm saying that to every one of you. I'm saying that to myself. I think I can double my check. 
And the way I double my check is that we go into talking to 40 people a day. It's continuing talking to two and interviewing one. And it's teaching you and partnering with you to do exactly the same thing. I saw they rolled out a new website for longevity today. Unbelievable for the stocks. And it's going to make it so much easier to do business in the world of the stocks of longevity. <laughs> So you can buy it easier, you can sell it easier, you can understand it easier. And that's really, really great that they did that website for the stocks. And that's what websites are for, to make doing business easier. And I'm thrilled that they did that. So make sure you look at that. I saw the press release I've been with Ken, and uh, so I didn't really get a chance to dive in. But I've seen the new app that these guys have, several of you have on this call. It's bad to the bone. It works. It works like a charm. And it's going to help you direct people to what they want to buy in longevity. But there's only one problem with the app. If you don't have the people to direct, you're still stuck in the water. If you don't interview those people and you're just firing off links to everybody, like every other random network marketer out there, all that's going to happen to you is you're going to be like every other random network marketer out there. The app is a tool it's not an end all. It's going to give you a lot of help. But if you aren't talking to people all day long, finding out what they want out of their life, finding out what they don't want, I promise you that it's just going to be another app you won't use. So man, get ready for the app. It's going to be bad to the bone. I've been kicking it around. It is great. But it's got it. you've got to have people in there to use it. That Uber guy last night, unbelievable. And I want to talk about it. He calls himself Blackie. I don't think you can get away with that. I mean, I can't even imagine this. It's just so funny. And uh, so I, I kept calling him Phil, and he said, call me Blackie. And I thought, I don't think I can do that, man, because it's just a, a weird nickname to me. So anyway, but the guy was the cutest guy, and uh, he's an auctioneer. He's a pilot. He's absolutely 57 years old. He's running half marathons. He wants to be a hockey stick with hair, and he wants a girlfriend and to get married so bad, but he's $300,000 in debt, and he knows that's the stopper because that stopped him in every relationship. So what do you think we're going to target him at? I am going to future pace this guy, which is something that you do where you just have the guy imagine a year from now living with a woman, have married, having a great life in a house with zero debt and then help him work backwards all the way to today to get that in a year. And that's what every one of us do every day. And I hope you're doing that with your business, working it backwards. You go look at it. If you want to make $12,000 a month in longevity, what do I have to do that? How, what do I have to do? Okay, well, can you find four people? I can find four people. Can you find four people to make $3,000 a month each? Yeah, I could probably do that. Would you commit to four people making $3,000 a month each? Yeah then you make 12 and you are getting people to their goals. And I'm watching all these names show up on this, uh, on this zoom. And I don't know any of the names and that makes me so happy. Lawrence Rothery. I am so happy that so many new people are getting on here and so many people are bringing their people here and so many people are bringing their people to bring their people to bring their people to bring their people. We are network marketers. That's what we do. This is network marketing. It is net, it is work, and it is marketing. And I have no idea what the net part was. But I'm telling you something, you guys. We can do this together. Contact mapping app is so killer. It has you forced into the world called follow-up and doing the touches. I got up this morning, I had 17 touches. So I sent Esther a text, told her I loved her. She wrote me back. I sent, I mean, all these people, everybody I sent a text to that showed up on the deal because I was in my hotel room and I have no idea what time it is anywhere in the world. So I just, I'm, I'm, I just sent them a text and pray I didn't wake them up that they had their phone turned off. I'm not calling them, but you guys, I know you can do it and I miss you. I know you can do it. I miss you. And I was thinking about it, and James Earl Moore just popped on my screen and I was thinking about him and James, unmute James. Yeah. James, a couple days ago, either the middle of the night or the middle of the day, I sent you a text and I said, I love you, James. Do you remember? Yes. 
And then here's where I was with that. I'm thinking, I've never known anybody in my life that was so for Tom Chenault, that would do anything for Tom Chenault, that will bend over backwards, sprint across a room, run and fill my car with gas, even though I don't need gas. Everything you do for me is so appreciated. And when you have somebody like that in your life, you have a tendency to take advantage and forget about them. And all I want to do is let you know publicly, I'm not ever going to forget about you. And I think you are a rock star and I love you. Thank you. How's that? Mom, thank you very much. I'm going, help, I'm, going help you, I'm going to help you be successful at this. Thank like, you. Like, no kidding. At a level that you've never seen. I am. You know, I kind of thought I had you under my wing. And then in my arrogance, I realized I, in my humility, I realized that in my arrogance, I hadn't. And so, <laughs> <laughs> hey, big boy, how are you? <laughs> so, anyway, so anyway, I'm publicly telling you I'm going to take it one more level with you, but mm -hmm. I want to do that with all of you guys. I want to just let you, I want to love on you. And uh, I haven't been able to talk to Denise. She, got, she went into this cornball course where she goes to California. She's staying at the Ojai Resort. She's with a coach named Byron Katie who's a woman, like, you know, that's, that's worse than the name Blackie, who named woman Byron. But at the end of the day, her name's Byron Katie. And the first thing they did with them was took away their phones with me on the road. So I have just, it's been horrendous. They, they, you know, nobody here to take care of me. Normally Dave Brisky and Steve Wallach send all kinds of people with me to make sure I don't either die of old age in my sleep or forget what city I'm in or something like that. I had no handler. I'm telling you, I just walked, Adrian was with me when I was back on the phone this morning and I did one more pass in my room. I found eight socks, a pair of boxer shorts, an iPad, two cords, and a little vial of medicine I needed. And I almost walked out the door with all that stuff, without all that stuff because I'm just a train wreck. So anyway, I probably screwed up your whole Zoom, Adrian and Pamela and Pat and Kendall. That was really cute, that, that, that picture thing with the cookie face. I love that. I just love this. I love you. I love this Zoom. I love getting better at network marketing. I love ranking up. I was just looking, you know, and I was saying, because Eric Bore said, you cannot walk out of here. You cannot walk out of here without a goal to double your income and, rank and go to the next rank. We're not letting you walk out. And I called Dave Brisky and I called Steve Wallach. I said, wait a minute, we have a problem. We can't leave. And they said, why is that? And I said, because there's no rank above, above like Diamond. They got to put another rank in there, man. I got nothing to strive for. I've got to be the example. I got to have, oh, there, there, there's, there's Dave Brisky. <laughs> so at the end of the day, we got to, I didn't even know Dave Brisky was on here. <clears throat> to have, well, now I got to start thinking about everything I saw. Did I say anything that got me terminated? So anyway, uh, <laughs> it was horrible. It was worse than having dinner with Eric Worre and his family. All right. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm, I'm tongue-tied. So everybody, I never said a word about you personally. Uh, let me think. Uh, that's it, man. I can't, I got nothing else. Somebody take over. I'm sick of me. Double Black Diamond, Barbara Stallings. That's what we need. Yeah, what comes next after the Black Diamond? Um, that's what they're going to call me, Blackie. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be called Blackie. That's going to be my rank. Yeah, so whatever it is, it'll be. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Something. Something, but it doesn't matter. They'll figure out some way to, to inspire us and move us. Uh, actually, that's how that Porsche Carrera convertible came into existence years ago, is because that the, the top rank wasn't there, and they put that contest out there. And when that contest got put out there, it had it inspired Denise and I to go be more, do more. And I know right now, people, a lot of you are rolling your eyes, thinking, "Well, he's making all that money and all that thing. I can't believe that guy is so arrogant that he needs to have something given to him in order for him to be there, do more." But you guys also understand human nature and that's what humans do is we're always trying to reach for something so 
I can't think of anything I want off the top of my head that might make me work a little harder, but I'll stop thinking about that. Then maybe Tesla. Not. <laughs> yeah, what'd you say? A Tesla. A new Tesla. Yeah, so whatever it is, we love you guys, and it's a great, great day. And uh, Ken Smith is a great place to visit. You don't necessarily want to live here. And so, <laughs> so, I got true. So he's telling, I've got about four more hours in the car of jokes with him. So I love you guys, and I'll talk to you all later, and I'll be back for next Tuesday meeting, I hope. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Bye. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Love you, Adrian. Love you, Marianne. Love you, Dave. Love you, Marianne. Bye. Thank you guys so much. Love you all. God bless. Thank you. Appreciate you. Bye-bye. Elizabeth. Thank you. Gosh, they end me. Oh, I'm going to be flying around. All right. Referrals. Bye, everybody. Without a space on. Oh, yeah. Seven days. And the alien is hanging on there, and now he's hanging on there. And right. there comes the alien to get him. All right.